So, in the series of basics of software defined radios and practical applications, uh, today we are starting the topic distortion parameters. So, uh, we have already discussed uh, some of the parameters such as arrow leakage, DC offset, IQ imbalance, and uh, in this uh, in, uh, distortion inducing parameters, they have different effect on different uh, topologies for the transmitter and receivers. Now, there are uh, other than that some other elements uh, and some other parameters which are inherent to all type of topologies and they are part of all the structures. So, these are the elements we are going to discuss now. First of all, inherent noise in the semiconductor devices. So, the devices uh, which are used uh, in the power amplifier design or in any of the circuits uh, of uh, FPGA etcetera. They have some uh, inherent noise there and uh, this is also uh, uh, known as 1 upon f noise or flicker noise. So, this is the formula for this uh, noise. So, this noise if it is shown uh, as a function of frequency then it is proportional to a constant k n uh, which is mostly uh, power spectral density taken at 1 uh, hertz of the frequency. It is proportional to the square of the input incoming uh, voltage applied and it is inversely proportional to the frequency to the power beta. Now, this beta is a constant which is from uh, which is taken from 0.8 to 1.4 and 1 upon f is specifically called uh, flicker noise or 1 upon f noise. So, this kind of noise it impacts the early stage of the uh, frequency. Uh, if you want to calculate up in a, this frequency in a particular band from f 1 to f 2, uh, let us take beta is equal to L uh, of uh, equal to 1 and then we can do the calculation by integrating this over that frequency band. So, we are doing the integration here k n upon f beta is taken equal to 1 into v square T f and over the duration of uh, f 1 to f 2 it has been integrated. By doing the integration of 1 upon f uh, we are getting natural uh, logarithm of f 2 upon f 1 and k n is common there and this is the expression which we get for the mean square noise voltage. So, in the receiver normally uh, whenever you are talking about a flicker noise, we define it in terms of particular frequency f a. At this particular frequency for that particular device, the flicker noise is equal to the receiver thermal noise floor. So, by defining this particular f a, we are able to define that noise floor. So, for example, for uh, MOSFET devices, um, it may be around 1 megahertz and in the literature, it, it is found that in a BIMOS uh, process, it is in the range of 48 kilohertz. Now, if you look at it, this f a, uh, it is of the order 1 megahertz and 48 kilohertz. So, it is at very lower frequency. So, which kind of uh, architects will be more impacted by uh, this flicker noise? Normally, the signals which uh, work near the DC range or which has the, uh, the profile which is very straight, very square like, then those kind of signals, they will be uh, mostly affected by this flicker noise. So, uh, when you are you have a signal which is a shape which is tapering in the nature, then it is not much aff affected by the flicker noise. Why is that? Because as we have said, let us say it is F A and for this F A the noise floor is basically defined. So, we are talking about this uh, flicker noise amplitude. We are showing it here. So, this is the point where it is actually uh, finding its threshold. So, suppose uh, it is more prominent near this region, near 0 frequency or DC frequency region. So, whenever you have a signal which has a profile, uh, which is a, it is a straight profile, something like that, multi carrier kind of signal, then this flicker noise which is appearing in the lower range, it is affected by this. If you have a signal which has profile like this, then this uh, noise is affecting a very small portion of that new signal, right. So, uh, that is why some of the signals are more susceptible to this kind of noise. Now, based on the expression, uh, 
of the mini square noise voltage, the noise at the mixer output is given by this expression, where N0 is the noise at the input. So, at the input, whatever noise is being applied, refer to the input, and Fa is the uh, defined parameter which was shown for these two devices uh, to be 1 megahertz and 48 kilohertz. So, uh, in which kind of uh, architecture up impact more uh, for the homodyne kind of receivers because uh, in this kind of receivers the signal is appearing near very near to the baseband or exactly at the baseband. So, uh, because of that uh, the down converting mixers they will be impacting uh, getting impact by this or if we are doing any amplification in the baseband at the DC level uh, frequency then it will be impacted by that. So, by looking at this expression uh, which is the mixer or uh, for the down conversion at the I f and uh, near I f and the baseband level we can see that it is directly proportional to F a and the square of the voltage. So, if you look at two particular kind of uh, profiles, this is the flicker, flicker noise which is more prominent near the frequency as I told you and this is the F a which is defining that uh, boundary of the frequency. Now, if our signal profile for example, CDMA, WCDMA kind of signal they have this kind of profile tapering profile, then it, they are uh, affected only in the small portion right. And if uh, you have a signal which is actually covering the baseband and it has this kind of profile uh, for example, uh, uh, GSM signals because their uh, bandwidth is also lower. So, it is more uh, uh, impacted by this kind of uh, flicker noise. Now, uh, another thing is that uh, we can uh, automatically see that it is more uh, prominent in the homodyne architecture heterodyne because we will be working at the I A frequency which will be at the higher frequency region. So, it will not be impacting that much into that higher frequency region. Now, apart from that the flicker noise which is actually because of the device property we have something called converter noise. So, what is the converter noise? Uh, we have heterodyne structure, we have uh, I F stage where we do the up conversion or the down conversion of the frequency. And after each stage if you remember our architecture we put a filter either it can be band pass if it is in the analog uh, in RF domain and it can be uh, low pass in the digital domain mostly. We assume that it will remove all the elements um, interfering signals uh, from entering to the digital side in the receiver and to the analog side in the transmitter, but actually what happens it stops most of those uh, interferences, but the noise is inherent it is distributed in the whole range. So, it is not stopped by those filters. In fact, each filter because it is a kind of uh, passive uh, element it, it introduces some of its own noise thermal noise etcetera. So, this noise keeps propagating and at the end we get lots of noise because of these filters also. Now, analog filter will add the noise what we can do? We can actually do the digital filtering, so that we can uh, spread this noise over a particular bandwidth or we can do the uh, brute force filtering in the digital domain. What do I mean by the dish, uh, brute force uh, digital domain filtering? What I mean to say that once you have achieved your signal here and you have done the quantization in the digital domain, it in, in the digital domain you are uh, receiving signal like this. Let us say it is your WCDMA signal. Your analog filter will be something like that, and it has because it is a passive structure, it is an analog structure, it will, it will add the noise. But in digital domain, you can simply put a sharp filter there, which can go quite below the noise level, and it will cut off all the data beyond this point. And it is possible because we, can, we are doing the post processing in the digital domain. So, it is quite possible to do and it will reduce the noise a lot and you will have your most of the signal having the core information. So, now aliasing noise which is uh, coming on to your base band because of the down conversion process from the mixer from IF filters. If those kind of noises are not an issue and we just uh, think about the noise which is inherent in only converter, then it is given by this formula this noise 1.76 plus 6.02 times n 
n is number of bits plus 10 log 10 sampling frequency divided by 2. So, if you look at this formula, this is showing the converter noise with respect to uh, your uh, uh, voltage in the in band if it is uh, assumed to be constant near 0 dB. So, it is the highest point here. If you recall when we were discussing the benefits of oversampling, we discussed this point there also that by increasing the sampling rate, by increasing the uh, oversampling factor which is given by D here, it is also called the decimal strain factor, we can improve our uh, signal to noise ratio. So, how does that happen? We can see the same thing here that our noise uh, which is here we can see that this uh, distance from the signal can be increased by increasing the sampling factor. So, uh, we can increase our signal to noise ratio significantly by using the oversampling there, but it is uh, there if only converter noise is taken into account. Now, because of that the overall SNR gain due to IF filtering process it can be given by this formulation this B i f is actually bandwidth of this uh, i f filter and f s is the sampling frequency and this is the gain in the S n r because of these two factors. Now, in this expression actually we are assuming that our i f filter it fits the signal completely and uh, it is rectangular in nature means it is just covering that portion only and no scope for any other signal. Uh, for example, in the same example here if it was your WCDMA signal and we want to do the filtering, then we are saying that our new filter is exactly over exactly over our original signal. Again, if we are doing this in the digital domain, then it is not a problem, we can do this because it is a kind of post processing. Now, that was uh, flickering, uh, we have discussed flickering noise and we have seen the noise which will come from the converter size be uh, side because the IF filter it will not remove the noises. Now, let us look have a look at the noise in the overall system, complete system any receiver. So, there is a term called noise factor, the noise factor of a system element it is given by F. So, basically this factor is given by S n r in divided by S n r out or signal to noise ratio in divided by signal to noise ratio out. In turn, if uh, the signal levels are same for the both, then it becomes noise level at the output divided by noise level at the input. For similar signal strengths right. So, basically because uh, if we have equal uh, noise at the input and the output there is no added noise in the system then we will have factor is equal to 1, but it never happens. Normally noise of output is always more than the noise of input. So, f will come out to be always greater than 1. So, noise factor. So, the receiver noise factor because of the noise factor of each stage is given by this formula f 1, uh, f 2, f 3 they are basically the noise factor of each particular stage f 1 is the uh, overall uh, noise factor of the whole chain which is at the end, g 1, g 2 and g n minus 1 they are the gain of the uh, each stage. So, if you look that is uh, look at this expression what are we saying here that the f 1 which is the noise factor of the first stage it is uh, most prominent here and after that as we keep increasing number of stages, the later stages the impact of the other stages is quite low. So, for the second stage it is divided by g 1, for third stage it is divided by g 1, g 2. So, of course, they are becoming smaller in their magnitude. So, what we can say here that noise factor is mostly impacted by first and second stage of the system, other are negligible in compared to these factors. So, 
whenever we are doing this calculation we are assuming that there is no other problem in all the impedances etc in this system they are perfectly well matched for the maximum power transfer so we are just dealing we are just concentrating on the noise factor here now once we have calculated uh, noise factor if you take the logarithm uh, 10 base logarithmic and multiply with 10 then it is called noise figure so this term noise figure is uh, heard a lot in the receiver side now we have to uh, keep into mind that noise in the transmitter is uh, another issue and the noise in the receiver is another issue at all completely means if you have transmitter antenna and you have receiver antenna you might have the transceiver where you have transmitter receiver in the same system but mostly these two are in independent uh, components so once you have transmitted the signal from here the signal property the information in that signal that is there but the noise will be decided independently from this end so when it is reached reach here the noise which the receiver has to deal with is actually coming from this uh, antenna resistance and after that all the elements inside the receiver itself so the transmitter noise uh, does not have much impact on the receiver noise because the channel etc will put most of the noise uh, high level noise and distortion there so both of the noises they are uh, treated separately in this case now uh, what will be the available power to this receiver so as i said that antenna has this res particular resistance so initiation or the input noise is coming from this element there and this is given by uh, pn key uh, k t b where this k is the boltzmann constant uh, given by 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 uh, uh, joules uh, per kelvin and b is the system bandwidth in this uh, case and t not this t is normally taken at the room temperature which is uh, 290 degree kelvin if we do the calculation for this one it is coming out to be minus uh, 204 dbw per hertz if you convert it into dbm by doing uh, uh, watt to uh, dbm conversion then it becomes minus 174 dbm per hertz again uh, if you convert this hertz into megahertz range then it becomes minus 114 dbm per megahertz so this is the input noise and after that other stages will add other noises so this is one example here uh, as uh, we can see here that we have a this signal source and our first input noise is coming from here then the li noise lo uh, line lo uh, losses they are making their first stage there is a band pass filter it is second stage pli amplifier third stage again there is a line it has losses then it is fourth stage mixer as the five stage if amplifier as the sixth stage and then eventually uh, the receiver in the digital domain uh, it is seventh one seventh portion so for this system how do we calculate the noise factor and eventually we will convert it back to the noise figure so we are given the gain of the stage as you can see the line losses cable they will not be giving any gain but they will be giving attenuation so that's why it is negative in the uh, sign so minus 0.1 band pass filter is also giving the loss so minus 0.3 amplifiers are actually providing the gain so 20 and 30 db gain are provided by this amplifier and the mixer is again introducing the loss of minus 6 db now uh, the temperatures if you see signal source as the room temperature 290 uh, kelvin line uh, losses because of the loss it, it has the heat up uh, heat in the system so it is uh, 320 and the mixer is the highest because it is doing the multiplication they are always working if it is active device then it, it will have higher heat so different temperatures are also defined here now uh, frequency is defined for the active elements where the frequency uh, means much bpf uh, which is bandpass filter the lines they are passive elements for the pre amplifier it is working at 3 and uh, 1 get there now if we want to calculate the ratio for this one so we are given the particular gains at uh, each point 
it is 0 0.977, 0 0.933, 100, 0 0.794 for each stages and we are given the noise factor for the each stage also. So, how do we calculate the noise figure for this one? So, we apply the our formula F1 which is our first stage uh, figure uh, factor we will apply directly after that second stage minus 1 divided by gain of the first stage after that F3 minus 1 and uh, multiplication uh, the gain of the previous one multiplied with the uh, previous to previous one. So, G1 into G2 it is being shown here after that this into this into this and 1.286 minus 1. So, we will keep repeating this process uh, for all these stages here. So, after looking at these stages we are getting 2.278 as our noise factor and once we convert it into back into dB then we are getting 3.576 dB. So, noise figure of this whole complete system will come out to be 3.576 dB here. Now, once we have calculated the uh, noise figure for the complete uh, receiver chain which is NFRX uh, uh, being shown here and PNDB is the available uh, noise power which we have calculated from the previous uh, first stage uh, at the input of the receiver at the antenna. G uh, is the system gain of the complete system then P uh, out is actually input noise plus gain. So, this gives us the output noise eventually at the receiver. Now, uh, this was when we are just calculating at the receiver, but if we look into uh, and take into account the detector bandwidth, then the new calculation becomes when we have the factor of this bandwidth also. So, it becomes 10 times logarithmic 10 BD and BD is the detector bandwidth. So, by this calculation we can calculate our different values. So, if we do the calculation for this uh, whole signal for the given example and we take the 200 kilohertz of the bandwidth then we get the total output noise power as minus 71 dBm. So, it keeps dropping in the each of the stages. Now, let us have a look at the noise from the oscillators. So, in the oscillator uh, which is basically used in the transmitter as well as the receiver they are used in the mixer to up convert or down convert uh, the signal. So, phase noise is something which is a kind of noise it is arising from the phase fluctuations and if these fluctuations are seen in the time domain and we can compare it with the original point of the uh, phase then it is called the phase jitter. So, we want to reduce this phase jitter because it's, it will uh, give us a very uh, wrong calculation especially when we are working at high frequencies. So, for example, uh, this uh, error if you see for a sinusoidal signal it is incoming wave and it was the intended instance and because of our error it has been shifted to this one. So, this V error has come into the picture. Now, this V error is, is what it is basically del T this uh, shift in the phase in the time domain into maximum slew rate. What is slew rate? Slew rate is basically the slope of uh, is uh, this incoming uh, signal. So, basically but just by differentiating it with respect to uh, the time we can get this rate. So, uh, let us do an example. Uh, here we are seeing the example case of the sinusoidal signal. So, this signal has amplitude of V m, it has incoming frequency as f in and t is the time. Because we want to calculate the slew rate of this uh, input signal, we, di uh, we uh, differentiate with respect to dt. So, we get 2 pi f i v m cos 2 pi f n t. We want to calculate the maximum slew, slew rate. So, it is d by dt of v s max. Now, here uh, the maximum value of the cosine function is actually 1. So, we have taken it equal to 1 and the maximum of this d by dt of v s is coming out to be 2 pi f in v m. Now, our uh, error uh, voltage because of this uh, jitter is actually maximum slew rate into jitter in time. So, it becomes 2 pi f in v m which is the maximum slew rate and jitter 
time RMS which is given by Tj RMS. Now uh, SNR of any signal, signal to noise ratio is actually maximum of that signal divided by error power uh, which is maximum for that distortion signal. So, if we calculate like this, our signal is uh, V s and it has maximum value V m. So, its power will be V m square divided by 100 and it is calculated for R not equal to 50 ohm which is the resistance chosen for the RF systems. Now, error which we have calculated here is 2 pi f n uh, V m T j R m s. So, we have taken square of this term divided by 100. Now, this 100 gets cancelled out and our SNR basically becomes 1 upon 2 pi f n T j R m s whole squared. So, uh, when we calculate the d b of this SNR term, it is 10 log 10 of SNR absolute value. So, this is the expression here. If we simplify this logarithmic term, it becomes minus 20 log 10 2 pi f n T j R m s, which is the actually expression which we have shown earlier. Uh, the jitter noise has more prominent effect at the higher frequencies because our f input is a factor here. So, if f, f input is high then it will become prominent there. So, for uh, not DC case, but for the IF, IF sampling case it is relatively high and if you are talking about the RS sampling cases then we have to especially take care of this effect. Uh, so, I am showing this example of 100 megahertz sampling clock with 0.6 picosecond RMS value for del t. So, uh, what is given to us? We have f i 100 megahertz and we are given del t RMS to be 0 0.6 picoseconds. Now, if you calculate uh, your effective SNR for this one, it will uh, from the formula it will come out to be uh, 68 dBc. Now, this 68 dBc if we calculate by our formula of SNR for the converter based on the quantization noise right. So, it will be equal to 1.76 plus 6.02 into n here. So, 68 equal to this one. If we do this calculation, this n will come out to be 11. So, effective bits are coming out to be n equal to 11. So, what does it mean? It means if we have any uh, converter which is of uh, value more than 12, uh, then the it will not have any benefit of that uh, because the effective bits because of our jitter noise is coming out to be 11. So, the noise will be fixed at this particular value because of the jitter noise. So, even if your quantizer is able to give you the noise level of this one, it will be below that noise. So, it will be the dominant noise, right. So, let us do one example. What will be the required uh, phase jitter? which is allowed for a 100 megahertz signal. So, that it is able to use 12 bit converter instead of this 11 bit converter. How do we do that? We apply the same formula and instead of n, we are going to use 12. From that we will find this 68 dBc SNR and we will plug this back into the original equation here and we will find what should be our T J R M S. So, I am keeping this as a one of the assignment and uh, in the next lecture we will continue from uh, this point and I will reveal the answer to this problem. So, thank you.